Circadian rhythms are cyclical biological changes that take place on a roughly 24-hour schedule. These daily rhythms include cycles between alertness and sleepiness, between light and dark. They are controlled by a biological clock in the brain, controlled by neurons in the hypothalamus, which receive information direct from the eyes about the levels of light in our surroundings. In the morning, these neurons release hormones such as acetylcholine and cortisol, which help us feel awake and energized. And as night approaches, they send signals to the pineal gland to release melatonin, a hormone that triggers a feeling of sleepiness. Changes in light-dark cycles can speed up, slow down, or reset circadian rhythms, which is why doctors often tell folks not to use their screens in the hours before bed. But our circadian rhythms control a lot more than alertness. They influence everything from our temperature to our metabolism. And severe disruptions to these rhythms can increase the risk of developing a number of endocrine and metabolic disorders. All of this just underlines the importance of a good night's sleep. But there's a lot more going on than just peacefully closing our eyes and opening them again in the morning. This is because sleep isn't a uniform experience. It actually consists of multiple stages that repeat in a 60-90 minute cycle. We can monitor these cycles using an electroencephalogram, or EEG, that tracks electrical activity in the brain. Sleep is divided into two main categories, REM and non-REM. REM, or rapid eye movement, is characterized by rapid eye movements and heightened brain activity. In fact, EEG activity during REM sleep resembles EEG activity when awake, but the motor cortex, which controls the body's muscles, is turned off to prevent us from moving around. As this is the stage of sleep that often involves dreams, this paralysis allows us to remain motionless even as we move around in our dreamscape. This rapid movement of eyes is not seen in non-REM, or NREM sleep, which is broken down into three to four stages, depending on which textbook you're reading. Stage one is the lightest level of sleep. It is characterized by slightly slower brain waves than seen during wakefulness. And in fact, people awaken during the stage of sleep may not even have realized that they've fallen asleep. Stage two sleep is characterized by slower waves, interrupted with bursts of oscillating brain activity called sleep spindles. When people enter this stage of sleep, they are more difficult to wake. Stages three and four sleep are the deepest, most physically restorative stages of sleep. These stages are also referred to as slow wave sleep because EEG recordings show long, slow, synchronized waves. If REM sleep is associated with dreaming, slow wave sleep is associated with healing. Muscles and tissues are repaired, glucose levels are restored, and memory is consolidated. The sleep cycle begins with stage one sleep, followed by stages two, three, and four. They then reverse as sleep becomes lighter, culminating in brief periods of REM sleep. Then the cycle repeats. During the first hours of sleep, people spend more time in the deeper stages. As sleep progresses, people spend more time in the lighter stages and in REM. The amount of sleep that we need changes as we age. Newborns require about 16 hours of sleep daily, while the average six-year-old needs about 11 to 12 hours. Adults generally require about seven to nine hours to function well. There are a number of theories that have been put forth about why we sleep. According to the repair theory of sleep, sleep is necessary for restoring physiological and mental functions. In other words, the brain uses sleep to flush out the waste that is toxic to brain cells. The adaptive theory of sleep, also called the inactivity theory, proposes that a period of inactivity was evolutionarily beneficial to our survival. Sleep may have helped animals avoid periods of predation, extreme temperature, or low visibility. The energy conservation theory proposes that sleep evolved to reduce energy demand and expenditure. That sleep reduces energy metabolism during periods of the day or night that present few opportunities to obtain food. Whatever reason why it occurs, it is clear that sleep is necessary to both physical and mental health. Sleep deprivation can lead to reduced immune function, impaired cognition, memory disruption, and hormonal imbalance. A lack of REM sleep results in poor procedural memory and increased aggressiveness, while depriving people of slow wave sleep makes people feel extremely tired, causes hypersensitivity to muscles and joints, and impairs memory storage. While a little sleep deprivation is normal every once in a while, there are also a number of disorders that greatly impact sleep. Insomnia is a disorder where a person has a hard time falling or staying asleep. Insomnia can be acute, lasting for days or weeks, or chronic, lasting longer than a month. It can be caused by stress, life events, or it can be a symptom of another disorder or a side effect of medication. 
My acute insomnia is caused by an overconsumption of caffeine. Sleep apnea is a disorder in which breathing interruptions occur frequently during sleep. There are two types of sleep apnea, obstructive and central. In obstructive sleep apnea, the airway collapses or becomes blocked during sleep, causing people to snore loudly or awake with a start. Central sleep apnea occurs because the brain does not send proper signals to the muscles that control breathing. Another common sleep disorder is restless leg syndrome, or RLS. This disorder involves a powerful urge to move the legs while lying down, sitting, or falling asleep. Narcolepsy is a chronic neurological disorder affecting the brain's ability to control sleep-wake cycles, which can cause individuals to suddenly fall asleep in the middle of the day, even when they're driving or having a conversation. They may also experience sudden muscle weakness, which causes them to collapse or be unable to move. Other folks might experience night terrors or episodes of screaming and intense fear that are fairly common in childhood, and sleepwalking, where people get up and walk around while sleeping. Other people might experience sleep paralysis, where they awake just before falling asleep or just after waking up to find that they're completely paralyzed. The first time this happened to me, I freaked out. But it's okay. Stay calm, keep your eyes closed, I promise it'll pass.